Moving on, we get you a, a very special conversation. Is the world moving towards an a la carte world order? Well, citizens of countries around the world prefer that their governments uh, pragmatically choose their partners depending on the issue at stake. This according to a poll conducted by the European Council of Foreign Relations. In fact, uh, we are joined by a senior fellow at ECFR right now, Susie Denson, Senior Fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations, is joining us. Uh, this report is extremely timely, and I'd like to take away from what's happened in the UK, the return of David Cameron, uh, and also what's happening at San Francisco, uh, the kind of meeting and the positive words coming out of the meeting between President Biden and uh, Xi Jinping. Do you think this whole conversation we heard for the last three to four years, especially after COVID-19, about decoupling from China, uh, that argument is somewhat dead with the kind of events that we've seen over the last few weeks? Well, thank you very much for having me. And I think the previous item, the US-China competition, is indeed still very much the framing for, way, for the way that um, other powers are thinking about this world. Um, but what we're seeing is a, a set of powers who are choosing not to choose a side uh, within that context. And so from that point of view, yes, I think the idea of decoupling um, is, is not where they are. And rather, they are very confident in the ability to have issue-based relationships which can be compartmentalized. Mm. The idea of the a la carte world comes from data that we have, which shows the extent to which uh, there is still a lot of identity between the countries we looked at, which included um, India, Turkey, Russia, um, uh, as well as um, smaller powers such as South Korea, Indonesia, um, uh, Brazil, and, and so on. Um, but these countries, they see um, a lot of alignment when it comes with the West when it comes to issues like human rights rights, control over the internet. They still place a lot of importance in the hard security guarantees from the US. Mm. But when it comes to trade, there was much more openness uh, from, from these states to, to, to have a closer relationship with China. Mm. Interestingly, when we when we sort of pushed the question and said, if you had to choose mm. which uh, would, between a, a block led by the US and a block led by China, which would you like your country to be part of? Mm. There was more support um, mm. for the Western bloc, mm. but ultimately countries don't feel that they have to choose. Right. Uh, Susie, uh, important statements. I'd also like to ask you in the context of India. Uh, we, when it came to Russia, we, in a way, uh, remain neutral. We continue to uh, import energy from Russia. We continued our defense relations, our age-old relations. China, we've had very complex relations. So do you think India, when it comes to its relationship with China, should also implement this a la carte policy? Yes, you have a problem on the boundary, which is difficult to resolve. It's complicated. But on issues where there can be agreement, go ahead, focus on that and minimize disputes in the other. Do you think that is the best way forward for India-China relations as well? Well, interestingly, um, when it came down to the question of trade, India was the um, was the country which showed the strongest preference still to align more closely with the Western bloc, with 65% of the respondents in India opting for the West, as opposed to only 12% opting for a, for a China-led bloc, which looks quite different from most of the other powers. Brazil was perhaps the next closest at, at 50% um, uh, for, for the West on that front. But I think that you're right, that the Russia situation is very central to um and, and the war that russia is waging against ukraine is very central to shaping the thinking of um the smaller and middle-sized powers uh, around the global order at the moment and our data our data it comes from um pre-october the 7th but i think that the gaza conflict which has erupted since then um is also very much shaping that picture and and uh, the west's response to that uh, what is very clear is that powers around the world are not expecting the Ukraine side to be able um, to push Russia back. They yeah. are expecting Russia uh, to be able to win. And I think that that is potentially feeding into this sense of um, an issue-based world. Yeah. Uh, they, they know that they might not like what um, other powers are doing, but they, they, they will still have to work in mm. defense of their interests in different ways. Right. I think what we take away from uh, the report at ECFR is a sense that 
countries are increasingly going to have to exercise what we talk about as strategic interdependence. So understanding what their interests are in each relationship, what their power is in that relationship, and investing accordingly um, in defense of those interests. Right. And do you think the Middle East crisis, the war in uh, Gaza, is going to push us more towards this pick-and-choose, issue-based relationship? You don't need to work towards uh, be aligning with either China or uh, US, for that matter. You can choose issue-based relationships even with your adversaries. Well, I think that what we're seeing is um, that with these conflicts erupting, powers are having to consider quite firmly how their choices are being restricted. There's a strong sense in our data set that many countries are actu actually see the Ukraine conflict primarily as a regional conflict, but they're very much affected by the um, actions which Western powers are, are taking around them, including sanctions and the impact that that is having on energy prices, food supply chains, and so on. With the Gaza conflict, again, this isn't in our data set, but I think that was understood immediately as a conflict with uh, potential regional and global uh, repercussions. And I think that the effects of it will be considered in, in that sense, hmm. that they will need to okay. continue to secure the relationships right. um, that matter for them hmm. in terms of uh, their their supply chains for the All tech right. that they need, um, for the resources uh, that, that, that they need and so on. Okay. And they will, they will form relationships around that. That doesn't mean that they don't care about the issues at stake in these conflicts, but we are living in an interest-based world. And, and therefore, it, it is that and that economic security dimension which seems to be driving the foreign policy strategies of power. Okay, powers. so interest-based world, economic policy driving decision-making. Thanks very much, Susie Denson, for joining us here on the program. With that, it's a wrap of this edition of Globalize. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.